there's a dog hair on the lens. Hey guys, it's Ali. Uh, welcome to my YouTube page where I talk about sculpture stuff, stop motion stuff, fine art stuff, random stuff. For one of our materials videos, this is one of our clay videos, we are talking about plasticine clay. When some people hear stop motion, they think about claymation, which is accurate. Um, claymation is a type of stop motion. So it's basically the, the puppets and the objects that you're using are made out of clay that you mold and, and sculpt as you shoot. So, so frame by frame, you're making tiny changes in, in the form itself. Um, so it's a little bit different than, than some doing stop motion in other materials. Um, this is perfect if you want to depict something morphing. So if you, if you want to have a, a salt shaker become a surfboard, become a Pop-Tart, or if you want to animate a face by sculpting it in real time. So like you really want to be able to animate like the individual muscles in the eyebrows moving frame by frame, um, then Claymation might be awesome for you. So one of the big companies doing Claymation uh, right now is Ardman in England. Um, they have done Wallace and Gromit, Shaun the Sheep, Chicken Run. Um, there's a ton of their stuff on YouTube, including the full Creature Comfort series, um, which is a TV series they did that's hilarious. So claymation, um, the type of clay that's used most often is plasticine. Um, it's also called modeling clay. Um, so plasticine is an oil-based modeling clay um, that never dries out, which is awesome. So it's good forever. It will never dry out. It will never harden. You can't fire this clay in a kiln or an oven. So don't try to bake it because it will not harden. It will melt into a puddle in your oven. Um, higher grades of plasticine are available. Uh, sometimes they're called plastilina. It's basically the same thing. But if you're doing a student, experimental, low budget, at home kind of film, like you can use the cheaper child grade stuff. It's, it's really, the difference is not gonna be palpable. Um, I think the plastilina, like higher quality stuff, is a little bit stiffer. It's a little bit harder to, to sculpt. But otherwise, not really that different. Plasticine is also useful to have around for propping things up as they dry. Uh, like when I make little hands. Um, it's good for filling in holes in a set left by foot tie downs. It's good for making molds. I bought five pounds from Amazon for like 13 bucks. Um, if you do that, I suggest getting a big block in, in white or light gray because some of the colors can stain surfaces or puppets. Um, also, some of that color can come off on your hands and then you go and you touch something else and the, and the color is, you know, that, that it's, you're staining your puppet basically, which is something you obviously don't wanna do. Um, so we'll talk about mold making, but I would not suggest making a plasticine sculpt. For making a sculpt, uh, I would advise using monster clay, which we'll talk about. Uh, monster clay is pretty awesome. So plasticine in terms of puppets, um, you might be able to make a plasticine puppet faster than you would a build-up or a mold cast puppet, um, but the puppet, the plasticine puppet, is going to take longer to animate. This is because every time you touch the clay, you leave a fingerprint, and you will see those fingerprints in your footage. If it's crazy, but you will. Um, and so you might have to smooth the object after you touch it. Every time you move, you might have to smooth it afterward. Um, so all in all, it, it takes longer to animate with with plasticine. So plasticine is heavy and it's not structurally sound enough to hold its own weight. Uh, so if you sculpt a person with their arm out like this and there isn't some kind of armature or skeleton inside, if this is like just solid clay, uh, it's gonna sag and eventually just fall off. Um, so you need to have some kind of armature inside larger sculptures or puppets made out of uh, plasticine. You might want to have multiple puppets or multiple copies of an object you plan on morphing in case the one you're working on starts to get too distorted in some way or another. So to have multiples, you can make a plaster two part mold, like I said, also called a stone mold. You can grease the inside of that plaster mold and melt the plasticine in a double boiler, um, not in a saucepan, right on the heat source. And I'm told that the fumes from melted plasticine are safe, but Can they? I don't know. Anyway, this is what a double boiler looks like. It's a two-part pot where there is a bit of water 
put in the bottom part of the pot and the material being melted is in the top part. So you're effectively steaming the material. So you'd use this setup for melting candy, chocolate, wax, stuff like that. Um, by the way, Jolly Ranchers are fun to melt and pour into a mold. Um, if, you, if you have a plaster mold, they're just kind of finicky. You, you can very easily start to um, burn them, basically. But yeah, so anyway, candy and chocolate and whatnot can burn if they're directly on a heat source. So you want to kind of steam them basically via a, um, a, a double boiler. Make sure that the pot on the top is one that you're not planning to use again for food. Um, even though plasticine is non-toxic, it's uh, really annoying to try to get it out of that pot. Um, and the pot's not going to be quite the same afterward. Always check the water level in the bottom pot every 20 to 30 minutes or so. Um, you don't want it all to boil away uh, and then things in your top pot start burning. Here's a picture of a makeshift double boiler, which you can do if, you know, your college student made it already. <laughs> which you can do, if you're, that's my dog. Uh, which you can do if you're a college student or you, whatever, whatever. If you need to make a makeshift one, you can kind of pull that off. Um, you could also use, to melt down plasticine, you could also use a candle warmer. Um, which I stole from my mom, they're super cheap, or a hot plate, um, which is probably a little bit excessive. But make sure that when you're using those, you're using a ceramic or a Pyrex glass container on top of them. So the clay itself is in ceramic or Pyrex glass. Um, short bit on glass. Pyrex is a special type of glass. It's borosilicate glass, um, and it's that type of glass can withstand sudden temperature changes. So most, most glass kitchenware and science lab vessels are uh, Pyrex. Regular glass, which is not Pyrex, can't stand quick, drastic temperature changes. It'll crack or you'll hear a popping sound and it'll just break in half. Um, I had fun with this once. It was a um, Tivana teacup, you know, a glass Tivana teacup. Theoretically, Tivana would know to use Pyrex, but <laughs> but it broke in my hand and it spilled 17 ounces of freshly boiled water onto my thigh. It burned so good. No, it didn't burn good. Burn it very bad. So, um, try to use uh, ceramic or Pyrex glass containers on top of uh, candle warmers or hot pots, hot plates, hot pot. It's different. That's tasty. You can make a little bowl out of tin foil if you're melting down real small amounts. Um, that works. Sometimes if you have a really hot light, you can kind of create a little cave out of aluminum foil and um, just being near the light will, will melt the plasticine. Um, I've melted plasticine in a little aluminum foil bowl on top of one of the set lights you use for stop motion. Yeah, they get surprisingly hot. I've actually cooked a burrito on them before, and I've burned it. Like, damn. <laughs> anyway, back to using multiples for a two-part mold. So, you have your plaster mold, you can grease the inside of the mold, you melt down the plasticine in your double boiler or your um, candle warmer or your hot plate. Um, you, you take the mold and you, and you clamp it shut real tight and you can pour that liquid plasticine into the mold. Let it cool. If the mold's fairly small, you could put it in the fridge. <laughs> Let it cool enough that the, the plasticine solidifies. Um, open the mold, and you should have a near-perfect copy of the original sculpture that you made the mold with. And so, now you have this mold, and so you can just pour and pour and pour and end up with 17 of the exact object, exact same object. That leads us to additives and solvents. Additives are things you can add to a material to change its properties, to make it harder or softer or more flexible, whatever. Solvents are substances that dilute or break down other substances. So, for example, nail polish remover is a solvent. It's acetone. Acetone breaks down nail polish and a bunch of other stuff, actually. So it's pretty useful to have nail polish remover around the house. In terms of additives, you can add wax to plasticine to make the plasticine stiffer and harder. 
You could melt down the plasticine, again, in a double boiler, and throw some wax in there too. You could use bees wax, which, is, which tends to be yellowish, um, or synthetic wax, which is more of a cloudy white. Um, either should do. I don't know of any interactions you might have with certain types of wax, but you should probably experiment with a small batch just in case there's some freaky reaction. Science. Anyway, that mixture, once cool, might be difficult to sculpt. So I suggest pouring the plasticine wax mixture into a mold or dipping a hard head form into it when the plasticine mix is melty. So you could have, um, you know, a piece of wire and some epoxy putty on there or uh, a, a, wooden, a wooden head that you have like the wire attached into. And then you can you know, keep dipping it and building up layers until you've got a bigger, bigger head. Um, the way that dip candles are made, if you've ever seen that. I haven't done this, but this was an idea that I had, um, so that you would have a head form that is made of hardened plasticine, so it doesn't really want to move too much. But then you can add facial features on top of it that are just pure plasticine. And so that way you can animate the features you can move the features around as much as you want but the actual shape of the head isn't going to distort next up with plasticine we're talking about sculpting and animating for plasticine you can use regular clay tools which look like any of these guys um, there are a ton of different types of tools you can use. I have ordered from Amazon dental tools before. Those can be good for sculpting. Um, that's part of why Amazon thinks that I'm a dentist. Whatever. Amazon is very confused about who I am because I have some strange search and purchase histories going on there. Anyway, this is an extruder. Um, so if you've ever played with Play-Doh as a kid and you had these little plastic machine things that you, you stick the clay in one side and then you pull a lever or something and, it, and it, it squirts out the other end in like little strings or whatever, that's an extruder. Um, so you can do, you can use them to make a very uniform, um, you know, long slender rope of clay um, or a bunch of other different um, shapes basically. Um, one of the nice things with melting it is that you can pour it out on a sheet of wax paper or silicone or something nonstick. And once the plasticine cools, you have a pretty uniform slab. Um, a slab is just clay that's flattened out. Like when you flatten out cookie dough with a rolling pin. Um, and like using cookie cutters to cut shapes out of that flattened dough, you can, core, you can cut forms out of that slab if you want a pretty uniform eyebrow, for example. You can, of course, make a slab manually with any type of clay, really, with a rolling pin of some kind. Um, if you'd rather not melt it down for whatever reason, you don't have access to a stovetop or whatever. Um, if you place two pieces of wood that are of equal thickness on either side of uh, the clay when you roll it out and have your, have your rolling pin ride on those two pieces of wood, you can get a slab of equal thickness all around. I don't know if you've ever rolled out cookie dough, but you know, toward the edges it gets real thin and in the center it's real thick. Um, but in, for most art purposes, you wanna have a uniform thickness in your slab. In terms of animating plasticine, keep baby wipes nearby when animating uh, plasticine or any kind of clay. Plasticine especially bleeds color onto your hands and surfaces. Um, there's a contamination concern uh, so if you have red on your hands, if you're playing with red clay, you get the red stain on your hands. Then you go to touch the white, that red stain's going to get on the white. You're going to end up with pinky white, um, which is maybe not what you want for, you know, a film. In terms of painting plasticine, you can't. Uh, the clay has to be able to move, for one thing, and paints like acrylic are flexible, but they're not flexible enough to really follow the clay um, without cracking or pulling up. Um, and secondly, good luck getting it on there in the first place because plasticine is an oil-based clay and a lot of paints that most people use are water-based. Um, and we all know, know that oil and water don't mix. You know, trying to paint water onto oil, it's not gonna work. 
uh, the paint just won't stick. Um, you can try painting hot plasticine onto cool, hard plasticine, um, but it's gonna be tough. You gotta be fast because the hot plasticine is gonna cool and solidify really fast. Um, so it might just start to crumb up before you can even get it on the up on the solid cold form. Um, either way, it'll definitely ruin your paintbrush. So since you can't really paint it, you can't really paint it on it, um, the best option is just to mix different colors together. Um, and so there's hand kneading, uh, which is just like mixing it together with your hands. It's a really good hand workout. Um, you can use a pasta machine. Um, yes, it flattens out the clay, but it does actually mix it too. So yeah, that's, that's pretty much all I got on plasticine. Um, not really used by sculptors so much, definitely for mold making, um, but definitely used more so by stop motion animators. Uh, good stuff to have around, definitely. So yeah, have fun.